myself dr purnima assistant professor in biotechnology from ks rangasamy college of technology it's my pleasure to introduce today's guest speaker dr g venila ma'am she received a be degree in civil engineering in the year 1988 and me with a specialization of environmental engineering in 1994 from bharati university coimbatore she obtained phd degree from anna university chennai in 2008 She has 20 years of teaching experience and 6 years of industrial experience. Currently, she is working as a professor and head department of civil engineering in case Rangasamy College of Technology Tirchengod Tamil Nadu. She received the best women engineering award for, from Institution of Engineers Salem and best women faculty award in the year 2020 from Nature Science Foundation Coimbatore. She has delivered more than 15 guest lectures in She has joined as a life member in various uh, societies, including Institution of Engineers (ISTE), Indian Science Congress, and Indian Society of Systems for Science and Engineering. Ma'am is a recognized supervisor for guiding PhD under Anna University Chennai. She has published more than 35 research journal publications in different fields, including inverse mass balance modeling, macromolecular analysis, groundwater quality modeling, groundwater potential identification. PE papers in Madrid, etc. And she has uh, published uh, her research findings in 17 more conferences. She is acting as a reviewer for my uh, peer-reviewed journals. And under her guidance, nine research scholars have completed PhD and three scholars are pursuing research at present. She is a member of. Uh, she is also a mentor for two research projects under National Post Doctoral Fellowship in DST SCRB, New Delhi. And received a grant of rupees nineteen lakhs twenty thousand. She has funding from various research uh, funding agencies to a worth of rupees twenty five lakhs for conducting conferences, seminars, and laboratory modernization. With this brief introduction, I request Dr. Venila Ma'am to take over this session. Please, Ma'am. Yeah. Um. Thank you, Purnima. Thank you for your nice introduction. Um. Is it audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ah. Okay. Uh, now hope the screen is uh, visible for point presentation yes ma'am we can see you can move to the slide show ma'am yeah uh, uh, i have shown only the slide show now yes ma'am it will take time yeah yes ma'am now it's in the first slide yeah. you can proceed ma'am yeah um good morning participants uh, hope uh, uh, this is the 18th day for you and almost you have got more input regarding the research methodology and uh, before entering into the session first i would like to thank uh, uh, the organizers kes rangasamy college of technology and also the nature science foundation for the opportunity given to me and uh, my session is of uh, research opportunities in civil engineering since i have been specialized in civil engineering and uh, my presentation covers in three parts like uh, what is research and what are all the characteristics of research that has to be carried out and uh, in civil engineering field what are the research uh, scope and then finally with some of the case studies what my scholars have done in our institute and if you coming for the research uh, i want to skip it in a faster way because almost all of you have got this input uh, during your uh, previous sessions and um, as uh, we know what is the research actually uh, if uh, you are taking up the research first thing is we have to study it very carefully the problem what is the problem we are taking that particular problem has to be studied in a in depth manner by using different scientific method so that may be the proper definition for the research and if you are coming for the characteristics of the research we know that 
if you are carrying out uh, true research it has to have a systematic approach and the second one is it has to have the accurate data and very more important is of ethics and code of conduct and we have to use the knowledge derived in the real time from the natural settings that is very very important and also whatever the problem may be taken in depth analysis to be carried out with accuracy manner and the accuracy depends upon the instrument what we are using and also the carefulness what we are taking while we are conducting the experiment all these things uh, depends on then uh, as is a general uh, <coughs> types of research like uh, quantitative research and uh, qualitative research and uh, quantitative research uh, will be of containing uh, more numerical uh, i mean more data oriented whereas the qualitative research is uh, depending upon uh, what is the uh, new uh, methodology we are following or uh, new things we are going to find out new theory to be formulated all these things will be coming under this qualitative research so research is the detailed study of a specific problem what is already existing and uh, as uh, already i have mentioned as the characteristics of the research the problem to be solved the process used for solving the problems should be in an organized manner and we have to find new methods or materials by altering the existing things and also it has to go along with the facts and uh, as we know that is uh, the research is nothing but the discovering the already existing but the hidden things this quantitative research already i have given this is collecting the numerical data and has to be analyzed using the mathematical models and qualitative research uh, depends on how why and how materials become in the way what they do and uh, provides in depth information and all of us know the difference between the research yet and uh, invention because uh, most of the participants uh, uh, already you have been involved in the research i uh, don't want to explain it uh, that is research is uh, finding something which is already existing not perceived before but invention is the creation or designing of an item which has never been existed before with own ideas and developments and this is the general research methodology usually we will be adopting while we are taking out the research and uh, uh, it flows like this problem identification literature review then defining the objectives methodology then data material collection experimental process analyzing the experimental findings validation of results and finally the concluding research so in this the very first part of problem identification is very very important because while we are selecting the problem first we should focus on whether it is of socially important or socially relevant next we have to give some low cost solutions to the problem that is also very very important so then and also while we are identifying the problem and we have to have the confident of handling the problem in future that is knowledge prerequisite is needed for handling that problem so while identifying the problem it should be of social relevant as well as it should based on the current scenario next is of literature review uh, uh, i can say this is a um, very very important area because the complete study on the previous research works conducted to the identify problem will be carried out and based on that only we will be uh, identifying our objectives so that while we are going for the literature review we have to go for some standard journals and uh, uh, high impact factor journal papers and we have to take the conclusions and uh, suggestions from that literatures that will help us to uh, proceed in what way we have to carry over the research then defining the objectives as i mentioned previously based on the literature review study we will be arriving the objectives and next is of methodology in order to fulfill the objectives we have to frame the skeleton of step by 
while we are defining the methodology we have to take care of the practical feasibility availability of the infrastructure and also the um, already existing methodologies then next is of data collection so this is uh, the preliminary requisite for proceeding our research and all the data to be collected and the basic testing of the material here only we will be covering all the experimental work and while doing the experimental work we have to do it very carefully as i have mentioned the characteristics of the study it should be we have to have a in depth analysis accurate data is very very important next is of analyzing the experimental findings so this only shows uh, you are not audible ma'am hello you is not coming ऑडिबल participants kindly wait for a few minutes let the speaker join again so so far i have given you a preview on the physics methodology uh, since i have been specialized in civil engineering i wish to throw some light on uh, the civil engineering domains and what are the scope of research in civil engineering so all of us know that uh, civil engineering means it is uh, just the construction of the building but nowadays it is uh, not like that because every service of a day to day human activity involves the contribution of a civil engineer now i can say that this construction industry is becoming a manufacturing industry so like that it is uh, developing and uh, to modern uh, as a civil engineer i am proud to show some few of the modern civil engineering marvels to you and uh, the very first one is of uh, i have shown is of uh, capital uh, gate abu dhabi actually uh, this uh, capital gate abu dhabi um will be of uh, 160 meter tall leaning tower and it inclines the of uh, 18 degrees westward and it is uh, 14 degree more than the tall is the uh, leaning tower of pisa that is the speciality of this tower and uh, next one is of uh, palm islands dubai and actually this is a constructed island consists of dera island palm zumaria and palm zabal ali and this is in the coast of dubai and it is constructed only with sand and rocks no concrete or steel is used in this but some threat to the marine ecology is there since it has been artificially constructed then next is of uh, burj khalifa uh, it is a um, skyscraper in dubai which is of uh, nearly 830 meters height 
and it is constructed with the reinforced concrete. Um, next is of uh, Bird's Nest Stadium. It is a national stadium of Beijing and having the capacity of... Uh, hello, Madam, audible? Yes, ma'am, it is audible. Uh, it is a national stadium of uh, Beijing, which is having of uh, 91,000 capacity and uh, the Swiss architectures have constructed this. So really, I am very proud to show all these marbles. And uh, coming to the civil engineering uh, divisions, uh, as I have mentioned that the civil engineering means all people will be saying that only the building of construction and structures. Well, very first and foremost division is of structural engineering, then environmental engineering, geotechnical engineering, hydraulics and water resources engineering, transportation engineering, and construction engineering and management. These are the major divisions. In addition to that, this, uh, now the uh, development has uh, come up with urban engineering, infrastructure engineering, coastal engineering, geoinformatics, and remote sensing also. First one is a structural engineering in which uh, we will be focusing on designing and building of uh, all type of structures bridges, towers, flyovers, tunnels, and offshore structures like oil and uh, <clears throat> gas fields. And now more research is going on in this structural engineering because first thing is we have to have the compensation of the depletion of the natural resources because we are using the natural sand and uh, we are using the natural uh, coarse aggregates uh, and also cement, what we are using as a binding material is having the carbon dioxide emission that also has to be taken care of. So that more research is going on in the structural engineering. Then next is of geotechnical engineering. Actually it deals with the foundation of the structure that is uh, below the soil, uh, it uh, covers, like uh, it is a design of uh, foundations and retaining walls. And uh, in this soil property, soil stability, all these things are uh, taken care of. And the next important one, and which is the need for R, is of environmental engineering, which ensures the water supply, domestic water supply to all the consumers uh, in the standards, and uh, also effective collection and reuse of the wastewater. And uh, main focus is of solid waste uh, management. That is also here in environmental engineering. Actually, it is a broader division and also is of multidisciplinary. Uh, the next is of transportation engineering, uh, in which the construction and maintenance of all uh, uh, road transport, that is land transport, air transport, and water transport, all these things will be taken care of. And in construction engineering management, uh, which will be uh, uh, which will be uh, managing or uh, planning of construction process and in order to uh, ensure the timely completion within the stipulated budget and now more focus is uh, given on uh, this aspect by using the latest uh, advancements like uh, artificial intelligence etc. And uh, hydraulic and water resources engineering uh, this uh, this deals with the water retaining structures uh, uh, like uh, dams, etc. And it also having the study of collection, storage, control, transport, and uh, measurement and use of the water in this. And uh, main thing is in this water resources engineering, um, the groundwater resources are mainly focused on and how the that can be augmented or the depletion of the water resources uh, how it can be uh, stopped by having some augmentation of the existing water resources. That is a major research that is going on in this area. Then uh, next is of urban engineering. Now all of us know that uh, the smart city project is uh, coming up uh, in some of the major cities. And uh, in this, uh, that focus will be on design, construction, maintaining the roads, water supply, sewer, municipal, solid waste management and disposal, public parks, etc. So this will be covering entire divisions, which is need for the urban development or for a city development. So the infrastructure is for the development of the infrastructure of a country, which is of uh, 
like all the infrastructures will be taken care in this and next is of coastal engineering as we know that in uh, coastal areas focus to be given on corrosion erosion and flooding so in order to protect that uh, may, uh, major researches are going on uh, in sea water intrusion etc in the some special divisions like geo informatics it addresses uh, actually uh, it addresses the problems of geography cartography and geosciences etc and uh, may, some of the softwares uh, like uh, gis are used in this uh, geo informatics and next is of remote sensing that is uh, uh, without having in contact with that we can find out the uh, we can detect monitor uh, the physical characteristics of an area by measuring its uh, reflected and emitted radiation at a distance it is typically from a satellite or aircraft and uh, in covid 19 uh, you could have seen uh, drones have been used for uh, spraying the sanitizers and all and uh, also that can be used to identify the affected people because of corona by fixing up some sensors without touching them it can identify the persons for that reason also can be carried out by using this technique and recent developments if i am taking in civil engineering uh first thing is of smart materials and uh, next one is artificial intelligence uh, that plays everywhere in all the fields and also in construction then finally of nano technology applications in civil engineering so i'll be focusing on these three specialized uh, recent developments in the latest slides and now in my core area uh, what are the researches going on particularly in structural engineering and if we all of us know that concrete is a material may, mainly used in construction and in that uh, as i have mentioned uh, by using the river sand uh, we are depleting the groundwater resources and that's why now the government has also taken stringent action uh, to use the river sand as a building material so in order to find the substitute for that now manufacturing sand and plastering sand have come up and these are the new ingredients for concrete that has been used and uh, this materials uh, even uh, cement can also be replaced with uh, some new materials uh, like red mud uh, which is uh, coming up from the uh, uh, malco industry we have used it that i'll be showing it later and next if you know that the concrete is a brittle material and in order to increase its ductility and uh, uh, some addition of fibers to be added and that fibers may be of either natural fibers or it may be of synthetic fibers and yet the research is going on in this fibers and uh, some of the examples uh, like glass fibers steel fiber carbon fiber and plastic fiber can be used and uh, sometime uh, actually the waste materials can also be converted into fibers and uh, that can be used in this in order to increase its uh, strength so this uh, some of the glimpses and uh, recyclable materials in concrete or the reuse of waste materials can also be used in concrete and uh, particularly in our research we have used uh, the uh, pet bottles as a plastics uh, has been used as a fiber material and also this can used for the aggregates also and nowadays uh, coconut shells also have been used as the aggregates that is a natural aggregate the research are going on in this then when we come for the risk assessment and mitigation seismic analysis plays vital role and in order to take up the uh, earthquake uh, waves uh, i mean agitation of the earthquake waves some material properties to be modified as well as the reinforced detailing have to be improved depending on the uh, i mean uh, intensity of the uh, seismic waves and uh, that based upon the in which zone the building has to be constructed based on that we have to have the we have to have modify the material properties then coming to the high performance concrete that is here the performance of the concrete will be high usually the concrete is a material which consists of fine aggregate coarse aggregate 
then it will be of a binding material like cement and water. These four are the ingredients of the concrete. And if you are taking this high performance concrete, in addition to these four, some super plasticizers, some chemicals are added to improve the performance based on the construction. If you want to have some uh, uh, multi-story buildings, then we can we have to increase the performance of the concrete. In those places, we can use these uh, super plasticizers. And also this uh, silica fume, uh, fly ash, and uh, DGBS can also be used uh, in addition of this cement. These are all some of the waste materials we are obtaining from the industries. So that uh, it is one way of uh, the waste material utilization. And uh, it will be having the significant strength and moreover durability will also be increased. And uh, this shows the improved ductility and chemical resistance will also be improved and serviceability of the building. That is very, very important so that it will be having the long term serviceability. This is uh, based on the performance. Next is of high strength concrete. That is the strength of the concrete will be higher. In some of the places, strength will be very, very important than the performance. In those places, we will be focusing on this high strength concrete. And uh, that has to be arrived by changing the mix design, what we will be doing. And uh, this high strength concrete uh, shows the compressive strength at a given age or at a given period, what is the compressive strength. Then another special type of concrete is called a geopolymer concrete and another name is of uh, no cement concrete also we can say. Uh, that is uh, uh, cement is uh, uh, producing the carbon emission. That is uh, nowadays uh, that is a major issue overall in global level and uh, we are going for carbon trading and all. So in this aspect in order to avoid the carbon dioxide emission instead of cement we can use some innovative and eco-friendly construction materials. And this geopolymer reduces the Portland cement, which is responsible for high CO2 emission. And in this uh, geopolymer cement concrete, we can use some waste materials, uh, such as uh, uh, fly ash, that is the waste product which is obtained from a thermal power plant, and uh, the ground granulated blast furnace slab uh, that is obtained from the steel plant. These two can be used as a substitute for the cement. And in addition to that, alkaline activer solution will be added. Uh, have, this uh, activer solution is a combination of alkali silicates and hydroxides. So that it will be improving the binding property, uh, which is uh, in the place of cement it will be taken. Then next is, uh, we know that if you are building a construct, if you are constructing a building, then Curing is very, very important. You could have seen that spraying of the water after doing the concreting. That is in order to gain strength and uh, there is a limit of 28 days, it will be attaining the maximum of 90 percentage of the strength. And uh, in order to avoid the external curing, now the research is going on on self-curing of the concrete. That is, the concrete itself will be taking care of its curing. And uh, by having the, or uh, by enhancing its uh, hydration process, and also it will be of more uh, durable concrete. Then uh, next, uh, since uh, there is no uh, need of spraying the water, it is taking care advantages of uh, water scarcity places, and it can be achieved by adding some admixture chemicals. This is of self curing concrete that will be it will be curing by itself instead of the external curing and gaining the strength uh, what we will be what it will be attaining after 28 days that will be attained next is of self healing concrete well you would have seen in the building some cracks will be there so this and all uh, due to some uh, manual errors or uh, if the workmanship is not correct then also it will happen and if the mix is not properly done then uh, this crack will be done actually can be successfully remediated the cracks in the concrete and uh, that is in this bacteria will be used and some of the bacteria they will be secreting the enzymes which will be arresting the cracks so the highly it is desirable because the mineral precipitation is induced because of the microbial activities and it is of pollution free and natural
so that uh, the repair and the rehabilitation is not necessary if you are using this concrete and coming to the composite structures usually structures means it will be either of steel or concrete suppose if you are using the bore then it will be coming under the category of composite structures so in this we have to study the combining properties of both the materials and we have to uh, have the knowledge of how it is behaving under certain conditions because steel concrete composites will be used sometimes in the steel concrete will be infilled and how the stress and strain will be taken care of all these things to be studied in this composite structures and uh, self compacting concrete usually doing while doing the concreting uh, external compacting will be done for the proper arrangements of the aggregates cement etc but if you are using this self concreting self compacting concrete it will be uh, flowing under its own weight and uh, no external vibration is uh, needed for this to undergo the compaction so that it can be used in the places where it is hard to use the vibrators because uh, in uh, cities and all um, uh, we cannot use the vibrators because uh, there will be density of the buildings uh, the nearer buildings will be very much nearer so it is not possible to, to use some vibrators and all so that places we can use this type of self compacting concrete where it will be consolidating by itself so that the strength will be attained um so far uh, i have covered about the research areas in structural engineering and uh, some of the special concretes also i have told and uh, particularly in structural engineering the uh, substitution of the materials is the major area now it is uh, going on next is of environmental engineering in which uh, first uh, i'll be taking up the water quality assessment um yeah, actually it is a very very broader area and uh, the physical chemical and biological characteristics of the water will be taken out as well as in this water treatment will can also be carried out by using some natural coagulants as well as uh, by using some uh, membrane technologies now it is coming up all these things we can do for the proper water treatment and in water treatment main thing is cost effective is very very important low cost technologies are uh, nowadays uh, we have to do so that uh, natural available materials uh, can be substituted in the place of water treatment and next is of waste water management in this waste water management uh, either it can be effectively reused or it can be disposed of waste water uh, now it has been uh, in the industries and all zero water discharge concept is adopted that is whatever the water they are using the waste water coming to be treated and it has to be again reused for some other purpose like uh, uh, gardening or irrigation or whatever if it is uh, suitable for the industrial process or that also it can be used so that uh, uh, zero liquid discharge has been adopted nowadays in the industries and all and uh, in order to remove the contaminants and the waste water uh, uh, that is uh, we have to have some effective methodologies and it should not have the impact on the environment so in that way the treatment to be um, carried out the next is of um, solid waste management the solid waste are um, huge in the nowadays in the cities etc uh, collection treating and disposal is a major problem in uh, disposing the solid waste so that uh, uh, nowadays reusable and recycling methods are used in the solid waste and uh, some of the local uh, administrative bodies are adopting it in a effective manner and even then uh, we are seeing uh, most of the plastics etc Uh, which are scattering on the road side and also um, it is affecting the growth of the plant etc so that uh, consideration to be given on this solid waste management so in this for the collection um, actually we, we have uh, adopted some uh, for root optimization we have used the gis techniques that is in minimum time 
how much maximum collection points can be achieved. So that can be one of the uh, area we can do in this research. And then uh, treating is, uh, that is uh, here we are uh, doing shredding, etc. and it has been compacted and uh, it has been uh, bagged and reused, recycled, etc. Uh, then when we come for this environmental impact assessment, so whenever we are going to start an industry before starting the industry, that impact assessment to be done, particularly for the environment. And uh, whether it can have some positive impacts and also the negative impacts. And the negative impacts, we have to take some necessary steps to convert it into positive because the it may have some economical uh, improvement also. So that we have to, whenever we are proposing a project, uh, evaluating the environmental impacts is very, very important because we should take into consideration of socio-economic, cultural, and human health impacts, both, as I have mentioned, beneficial as well as adverse impacts. Then coming to the geotechnical engineering, um, it is of the study of uh, soil particularly, I can say, because uh, uh, below the soil, whatever substructure we will be saying usually, the structure which is coming below the soil. That is very important because uh, the foundation is uh, the heart of any building. So that while we are designing the foundation, we should be very, very careful in studying the soil properties, etc. And nowadays the machine learning and artificial intelligence are used for analyzing the soil properties in an accurate way. And in order to improve the stabilization of the soil, uh, because safe bearing capacity is very, very important for uh, any soil. So in order to stabilize the soil, some microbial organisms are used. That is in a bacterial way, soil stabilization are used in order to enhance its physical properties. And uh, examples of microbial induced calcite precipitation. Then uh, seismic waves, which is coming under the earth, that also to be studied because that uh, hazard uh, will be having more impact on the human being and also uh, the life of other things. The dynamic response of the foundations uh, are studied uh, using this uh, numerical analysis and some later software are used for uh, studying this. And uh, the prediction of earthquakes also can be done to some extent. And usually while uh, the construction has been done on this uh, seismic uh, prone areas, uh, foundation is mostly taken care of. That is cushion foundation we will be preferring uh, because even though if there is any wave formation, then that will be taken care of. Uh, now advancement has gone to lunar so that the lunar soil is a fine fraction which is fine on the surface of the moon. And uh, that also the behavior is, uh, study of behavior is uh, going on on this lunar soil. Then um, in structural engineering, materials are playing vital role, research of materials. And now smart materials are very much focused uh, because they are responding to the change in the environment as well as they undergo the material property change according to the conditions. So these property changes, this can be uh, leveraged uh, to create an actuator or a sensor without any additional control or electronics. That is just uh, by providing an actuator or a sensor, uh, we can bring out the property changes. Uh, so that's why they are called as uh, intelligent and adaptive materials. And um, Smart materials are uh, nowadays embedded in the computing tools such as uh, sensors and microprocessors uh, according to, so that according to the situation they will be acting like. The new classes of structural materials uh, are uh, nowadays emerging in uh, civil engineering construction. So some commonly used, uh, some smart devices uh, I have shown, that is uh, the automatic uh, fire sprinkler uh, which will be sensing the smoke and giving the alarm while a fire occurs and the sensor fitted water tap so in order to avoid the water wastage and the automatic sliding sensor door and also the escalators with the motion sensor these are some of the 
uh, used devices in this uh, construction process. And since, as I have mentioned, it has the capability to respond to the changes in the conditional environment, uh, it will be sensing the minute cracks and flaws also, so that uh, it will be giving the indication and uh, alternatively we can steps to avoid that. And this um, electrical conductivity of the concrete can also be improved by using some electromagnetic shielding. And in the road payments, some traffic sensor recorders also can be constructed in order to take the survey of the traffics. And uh, in the previous point, as I told, it will rehabilitate the cracking of concrete when super elasticity smart materials used as a reinforcement bar. So apart from that, some common uh, smart materials like uh, shape memory alloys, magnetostructive materials and piezoelectric materials, electro rehological fluids and electrochromic materials are also there. And um, since this, uh, as these are all uh, very intelligent material, they will be absorbing the strain energy without any permanent deformation and they will be regaining its uh, defined shape when subjected to thermal changes. So that is the main uh, um, speci speciality or characteristics of the shape memory alloys. When come to magnetostructive materials, uh, here the electric field will be induced and so that the mechanical deformation will be undergone. And this is uh, applied in uh, pumps, valves, and also in aerospace uh, wind tunnel. The next is of piezoelectric materials. Uh, piezoelectric materials, uh, they are having the capability to produce voltage when surface strain is introduced. And uh, they will go undergo deformation when electric field is applied across it so that this will be integrated into a structural member and this generates an electric field according to the mechanical forces. Then this electro, electro rheological fluids, actually this uh, will be changing in viscosity. This will be a colloidal suspension that will undergo some changes in viscosity if the electric field has been applied. And they are very highly sensitive and uh, even a small changes they may respond to instantaneously to uh, even a small changes there to the applied electric field. And mainly these are used as uh, shock observers, particularly in uh, seismic prone zones, this can be used. And this electrochromic materials, they are the light transmission uh, properties will be altered when voltage is applied according to the conditions so that uh, we can save the energy. So this will coming under the category of energy conservation buildings. They will be adopting these type of materials. Uh, so far I have covered the smart materials. So coming to the artificial intelligence. Uh, so mostly what we are thinking is uh, civil engineering means it is uh, only of uh, constructing the building or modifying the structures, etc. But in that also, the artificial intelligence has been impacted its role like uh, robotics, Internet of Things, they have been introduced and uh, it has been estimated that the building cost has been reduced up to 20 percentage if we are using these type of techniques. And previously, manually, we will be laying the bricks, etc. So that some errors may be occurring. But now these robots are used for fabrication of the materials and also for testing for the strength and generation and maintenance and checking the level of impurity in the raw materials. And uh, moreover, uh, the augmented reality and virtual reality also playing a vital role in uh, construction industry. And uh, the engineers can run virtual reality goggles and uh, send the mini robots into the building and their construction and they will be observing what are the stages of the construction. So they need not go into the construction field. And these robots uh, use the cameras to track the work at progress. And it is also being used to plan the routing of electrical and plumbing system. So that is very, very important in every building. And uh, the modern buildings uh, to plan the route of the electrical and plumbing system, this artificial intelligence can be used. And moreover, to develop the safety of the for the work sites, this artificial intelligence has been used. And uh, 
this uh, has been integrated with the building systems uh, it is improving the occupant experience as well as the operational efficiency has been increased and uh, the space utilization and asset, asset utilization can also be optimized and uh, the orientation of the building can also be done in order to uh, absorb or in order to have the maximum natural energy and it is used to plan as i mentioned electrical and plumbing systems and also to track the machinery objects on the sites and also the alert the supervisors if there is any safety issues and construction errors and productivity issues and uh, more sophisticated applications in construction management that is uh, effectively completing the project in time that can also be done and design can also be optimized quality control and risk control can also be monitored by using this technique um, as we are using the smart materials then the structure will be called as intelligent structure and uh, it will be uh, it has the ability to identify its status and optimally adopt its function to stimuli and uh, mainly the research is on uh, two areas one is identification of the structural behavior of or the properties of the Materials that is the deformation, energy usage, and damage evaluation, and another one is control of structural response to the external agencies like wind, earthquake, or internal like acoustics, temperature variation, etc. So that we can have some uh, risk assessment and uh, we can control the risk to some extent, and uh, some of the structural failures uh, due to natural uh, events. uh can can be avoided or the damage can be minimized by having the rapid assessment of structural integrity in green building concept is this very much emerging uh, that is uh, we are using only the natural energy and uh, this uh, um tremendous growth of this green buildings design and construction has brought the sustainability to many design and construction project you can see in this uh, a uh, picture that is uh, by uh, taking out the materials or by acquiring or by having the material from mining and then fabrication and it will be constructed and it will be used in the building and finally it will be landfill or recycle at the end of the life so that it will be of a cycle and no harm to the environment will be there and that type of uh, buildings are known as sustainable built systems and uh, nowadays we are very much in need of the sustainable built, built systems and uh, previously the lead uh, certification has been given to only the uh, commercial buildings factories etc and now they have planned to give it and uh, the very much emerging field here is of uh, nanotechnology uh, in nanotechnology focuses on the materials uh, how far this nano materials can be used for improving the fire resistance corrosion protection insulation as well as uh, for water treatment mainly we are using it and uh, these are the nanotechnologies and uh, particularly in cement and concrete as well as in steel we are using the nano materials in the place of uh, this uh, um, conventional materials and they will be leading to stronger more durable as well as uh, self healing fire resistance and quick compacting mostly self compacting also and uh, this uh, silica fume is uh, used in the place of uh, cement that's called as nano silica then nano structured metals carbon nanotubes and carbon nano fibers are also used mostly in this uh, civil engineering field then um, the very much advanced uh, has been used in the surveying technique that is aerial surveying uh, here uh, by using the airplanes helicopters um, i mean uh, even nowadays uh, drones are playing the vital role um, in surveying the remote areas where the man cannot be accessed so this is the emerging field here and it is very much useful in the archaeology fishery surveys and also geophysics in geophysical surveys 
because this uh, geophysics technique is used by using the vertical electrical sounding we can uh, find out the ground groundwater potential identification in that way it, it is used and hydrocarbon exploration and land survey is the basic one then mining and mineral exploration and also to monitor the or collect the samples or monitor the population of wildlife and insect and uh, in order to monitor the vegetation and ground cover and to carry out the reconnaissance survey also it can be used and in transportation projects in conjunction with the ground surveys it will be used um uh, since uh, now during this covid time uh, drone has got its importance and uh, it is of unmanned drones and uh, it is faster safer and fast efficient uh, to survey at the heights and uh, unmanned aerial system surveys and unmanned aerial vehicle surveys also it can be referred and it is of uh, popularly increasing and uh, it is uh, for the quick survey we can use uh, this type of drones quick and accuracy that is uh, very very important and moreover in the places uh, where uh, we cannot go physically we can use this type of drones so with this uh, I, i have given a overview picture of the research areas what are all can be focused in the civil engineering and now i am going to concentrate on some of the case studies that is the few researches conducted at uh, our institute in our department uh, which has been uh, guided by me my research scholars has carried out uh, uh, different uh, uh, researches and only a few of this i am going to highlight and uh, very first on us uh, since it should be a fast effective uh, first uh, we have taken the polyethylene tetraethylate fibers as a material and uh, in that experimental investigation has been done uh, on the structural behavior of concrete and this uh, pet fibers have been used along with the objective is to use this non biodegradable plastic waste as a construction material and uh, these pet fibers have been obtained from the used mineral water container as a fiber in conventional concrete and here the finding is since we are adding the fibers to the concrete it uh, increases the ductile behavior of the concrete the strength has been increased and uh, we know the scenario of the plastic wastage problem around the world and uh, these uh, the paint bottles are collected and they have been uh, cut into sizes of uh, 5 cm length and it has been used as a fibers and in this uh, it has been uh, mixed along with the concrete for uh, beam and slab and the strength has been tested and the major observation is uh, first thing is uh, we are solving the problem of uh, uh, waste management that is uh, waste can be managed and a new building material for the proper solid waste management and it has been added as a fiber in the concrete in addition to the regular ingredients of the concrete and it is of low cost material and uh, also it is available with the zero cost from the experimental and analytical investigation the pet fibers uh, when Added with one percentage ratio, attain the better strength and durability characteristics than the conventional concrete. You have got the higher uh, value. Um, then uh, this is the combination of environmental engineering and the structural engineering stream, in which red mud, which is a waste material, which is uh, obtained from the Malco factory, it's a byproduct obtained during the extraction process of alumina from bauxite. It is a uh, waste uh, dumped as uh, industrial waste and uh, Uh, we have taken it as a material and uh, it is replaced with the cement and in addition to that uh, we have added the polypropylene fiber also so here the cement has been replaced with the red mud up to 15 percentage in the concrete has given the better strength and durability and uh, these are the test setup of the beam uh, beam beam column joint as well as column and also rapid chlorate penetration test also has been carried out here and the major observation what we have done is the industrial waste like red mud has been uh, used uh, as for environmental benefits as well as it increases the uh, concrete cost and it is an effective solution for disposal of industrial waste 
so that uh, we can save the environmental hazards and 15 percent is replacement gives the uh, optimum value for strength then uh, next one is uh, uh, the fruit field waste but particularly the jack fruit field waste have been used and the liquefaction studies and hydrogen production has been done by using the continuous strip tank reactor and uh, particularly we have used the jack fruit field waste and uh, because of the poor uh, uh, storage it has been effectively used for uh, hydrogen generation and um, So actually, if you are adding the alkaline solution, uh, then the biodegradability is uh, getting increased. Uh, so that sodium hydroxide has been added as the alkaline solution to increase the biodegradability. And uh, we have tried with uh, different normalities and uh, which one gives the optimum value. Then with that, we have uh, proceeded with the continuous strip tank reactor. And uh, the maximum hydrogen uh, yield rate of 1.54 liters hydrogen per gas of all three solids added we have got. Then um, uh, this is uh, with the water resources engineering field. And um, we know that uh, groundwater is uh, getting depleted. But in and around that area, in some of the places may be having uh, the groundwater potential. And how optimally we can utilize that groundwater throughout that particular area that can be designed by using this one. So the integrate, uh, we have taken the area as Turunji uh, watershed, which is uh, in Harut Taluk, uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, we have used some geospatial techniques, uh, integrated approach for groundwater augmentation. So here the groundwater potential has been estimated and identified and then uh, we have found out the suitable locations for introducing the artificial groundwater structures uh, to the local administrative bodies we have recommended for augmenting the study area groundwater table. And uh, the GIS uh, based models have been used. And uh, here the groundwater potential zones were identified and uh, also in which place the artificial groundwater recharge points can be located for both drinking and irrigation was also assessed. So these are uh, some of the GAS maps uh, of the study area. And for this, we have taken uh, the rainfall and uh, soil properties, etc. And based on that, uh, uh, we have uh, considered the groundwater augmentation. So these are all uh, uh, the, since uh, because of the time constraint, I have covered only uh, four areas. And uh, with this, uh, I am concluding that civil engineering has a vast scope of research and particularly for multidisciplinary. Since most of the participants are from various disciplines, uh, the civil engineering field is an area to have the multidisciplinary research. And also, it is a very much emerging one. So with this, I am uh, completing this presentation and thank you very much for the opportunity given and for patient listening and uh, now it is the time for queries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the session is open for query right now and we have some participants who raised their hands. I think Shankar, sir. Shankar, sir, you can ask your question. Hello, madam. Sir, good afternoon. Sorry, good morning. Good morning. Mm. Thank you, madam, for, for, for your nice presentation. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Mm. Actually, I have a small query. Basically, I have a mechanical engineer. Uh, your okay. Is, sir, very good at research and yeah, case studies are also good. But I need one, uh, one um, answer from you. Suppose okay. uh, the construction, uh, civil constructions are there like uh, houses and uh, okay. they are subjected to natural disasters like your earthquake or cyclone. So uh, yeah. what is the scope of research or how do, what is the challenge we are following the construction? Please tell me. Uh, sir, um, uh, actually for your question, uh, the risk assessment and mitigation is a major uh, research area in this uh, civil engineering, sir. What are the risks evolved? Particularly this earthquake. We will be having the previous study of the earthquakes in that particular zone. And also in uh, India, we are having the seismic zones. 
and uh, in uh, which in which zone we are going to construct a building based on that we have to follow the codal provisions sir is it audible is it audible actually madam actually madam uh, uh, i am staying in sikkim northeast northeast okay, of okay. actually earth, earthquake area so here, yeah 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 uh, it is earthquake area sometimes uh -huh. uh, earthquake occurs so that's why okay okay uh -huh. so in uh, what is the richter scale sir so far you have received uh last uh -huh. earthquake was 2008 uh, 2011 uh, that was 6.8 it was uh, 6.8 yeah yes. okay okay Uh, uh yeah till 7 uh, it is tolerable but even then uh, some uh, minor uh, uh, damages will be there uh, no, yes yes cracks cracks are there in the buildings there yeah, are yeah. cracks uh, yeah yeah uh, sir actually no that is uh, nowadays we are following the national building codal provisions and bylaws and uh, in which zone the building is going to be constructed because based on the seismic zones we have to adopt the construction techniques for example if you are located in the uh, seismic uh, prone area then we have to provide some cushion foundation and shear wall structure and dampers also to be provided in order to take care of uh, this uh, earthquake that has to be done from the foundation level and moreover uh, we should not have more um, column like that is less column should be there because the damages will be getting reduced so that concept to be used in this uh, earthquake prone areas madam the materials used uh, uh, generally the, uh, is it possible to use the uh, um, vibration absorbing materials yeah yeah so that's what sir i have sh shown you know shock absorbing uh, Technological yes. materials and all I have told you know it will be absorbing the shock or shock resistance uh, materials can also be used. They are they are used in the foundation or in the walls or what? Uh... Sir, in the foundation dampers are can be have to be provided or uh, a cushion like to be provided in the foundation itself, sir. Because it is of the below the earth only the waves are having its uh, impact, so that uh, it is uh, better we should have it in the foundation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Participants, if you have any other questions, you can uh, uh, ask Vanilla, ma'am, Doctor Vanilla. I'm hope there is no more questions uh, regarding your okay. session, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Ma uh, thank you so so much. Thank you for okay. being with us in this uh, okay. uh, day uh, for your session. It was it was a really a, a plenary session, ma'am, uh, regarding the research in uh, civil engineering. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your experience. Okay. Okay. At this juncture, I would like uh, to thank uh, the organizers. Uh, Department of Biotechnology, K. S. Rangasamy College of Technology, and also the Nature Science Foundation for the opportunity given to me, and particularly my special thanks to Dr. Pon Murugan sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay.